I am proud to rise in the House on today's opposition motion. To begin, as a woman and mother, I will always support an effective motion for equal pay and compensation for equal work. It's important that every Canadian entering the workplace receives equal compensation. In 2012, the Conservative government successfully passed the Public Sector Equitable Compensation Act. This act affirms that women in the federal public sector should receive equal pay for work of equal value, an act consistent with the Canadian uh, Charter of Rights and Freedoms. This act included significant objectives, including timely and efficient res resolution for compensation matters, as well as accountability, definition, processes, and transparency. I am proud to say that in the last 10 years, we have seen an increase of women in the public sector. 55% of the federal public service are women, and have, we have seen the gap between pay equity decrease in the public sector. Currently, the pay gap between women and men, age 35 and less, has lowered to 2.2%. The Public Sector Equitable Compensation Act and the Reform of Pay Equity is the only act that advances joint union employer accountability, providing a proactive process, collective bargaining, and the right to equal pay for equal value. This is just one advancement put forward by the past Conservative government. Our party was the first party to have a female cabinet minister, as well as the first female senator. And the most important member or support we can see in our very own leadership. Studies completed in the 41st Parliament include women in skilled trades and science, technology, engineering, and mathematics occupations, practices to prevent violence against women, economic leadership and prosperity of Canadian women, eating disorders among girls and women, and sexual harassment in the federal workplace. We have an excellent track record. I would support this motion with the following amendments. That given that the Conservative Party absolutely supports pay equity, the motion would be amended to delete Part C and Part D in their entirety. Part C accuses the Conservative Party of removing the rights of public service employees to pay equity, which is not uh, thank you, which is not factual. And Part D calls for a special committee to look at the pay equity issues for women, and this committee would duplicate the work of status of women. Today, I am joined to speak on this motion by fellow Conservative members representing Sarnia Lambton, South Surrey White Rock, and Yorkton Melville, great women from across this country. Women represent nearly half of the Canadian workforce. Women make up the majority of enrollments in college programs, and the number is higher among graduates. The majority of graduates from university since the early 1990s have been women. I am proud to stand in this house as the member for Elder Middlesex London. On my road to this house, I am proud to share that at my party's nomination, four of the six candidates were women. In the 2015 election, three of the six candidates bidding to represent my riding were women. Furthermore, in my own constituency, there are a large number of females in leadership roles, including chief financial officers and chief administrative officers in many of the municipalities that I represent. Many of the successful small and large corporations in my riding are run by women, including construction companies, financial institutions, and automobile dealerships. I come from a family of very strong, very strong-willed women in leadership roles. My sister Linda is a principal. My sister Anne is the head of a science department at a high school. My sister-in-law Lisa is in charge of logistics for a successful trucking company. And my own mother ran the business side of the family farm. Personally, I have dealt with pay equity issues. In 1989, after working two and a half years at a business in my community, it came to the attention of a coworker and I that the male employees were being paid almost $2 more an hour. Our action was taken, uh, our action that, that we took was to take this issue and address it with management and the board of directors. Shortly after this, this issue was ratified and equal pay for equal work was their policy. Maybe as a young girl, I didn't realize that uh, playing as a girl on an all baseball team was strange. Maybe I wasn't aware that playing ice hockey and football on the school play garden was not supposed to be for girls. Or maybe I've always seen myself as an equal. Women's issues are very important in this country, and I believe we must focus on important issues, including violence against women and children, as well as self-esteem issues. We must educate our youth to be sure that we condemn abuse to others, and we must work to instill values of equality in all people, including young girls. 
We must support programs on mental health, as well as local programs in our communities to improve self-worth. We must work together as a society to be inclusive. As I said so many times, I am a proud mother of two teenage daughters. I have five nieces and one great niece. Just yesterday, one of my daughters found out that she was accepted into a program at St. Clair College for protection, security, and investigation. My niece, Brittany, just received a recognition as the College Hockey America Player of the Month, and my niece, Sarah, was awarded the Sportswoman of the Year for the Mid-America Conference for Golf. At one time, these were all male-dominated fields and activities. Last year, I was proud to be one of the speakers at the Algon Business Resource Center's International Women's Day event. I was surrounded by successful businesswomen, including two local business owners who were also presenting. The room was filled with successful businesswomen and entrepreneurs. I would like to share with you a few exciting facts. Women represent nearly half the workforce in Canada, and women are senior executives, CEOs, and board members here and across this country. Our party's view is that Canada will be far better off when the full potential of women and girls is represented in every sector of the economy and society. The previous government launched the successful It Starts With One, Be Her Champion, seeking 5,000 leaders to not just counsel their chosen mentee, but to truly champion young women. In Budget 2015, status of women was mentioned multiple times and $700 million was invested into the Business Development Corporation. Our government also introduced changes to the Labour Code that supported longer leaves for families. In 2012, the federal budget announced women on boards. Then again, in 2015, the first women's trade mission took place in Brazil. And our Conservative government created the Women's Entrepreneur Forum, a national conference for women entrepreneurs. I must reiterate that I fully support equal pay for equal work. Portions of this motion duplicate an act that we already have in place, that we already have seen that provides excellent growth for women. We must continue to support women in the workplace and provide opportunities for them. The request for a committee consisting of 10 members that includes more resources will just duplicate the work that the Standing Committee on the Status of Women already does. I am a proud member of that committee. The mandate for the Status of Women Committee already allows for subcommittees to be created to focus on particular issues, as well as to study policies, programs, expenditures, and legislations of departments and agencies. This would be a duplicate of a committee, as well as an added expense to the taxpayers. The Status of Women Committee, under the mandate, already focuses on equality, poverty of women, and violence experienced by women. I cannot support additional funds for an all additional committee when one already exists. When reviewing this motion in its entirety, I will accept points A and B. I believe it is important to continue to close the unacceptable gap in pay between men and women, which contributes to become inequality and discriminates against women. And I do recognize pay equity is a right. As a proud woman, I will always support equal pay for equal work. Unfortunately, this motion does nothing further than cause, uh, for any cause for Canadians. The Conservative Party supports pay equity for women. By introducing the Public Sector Equitable Pensionization Act, Compensation Act, Conservatives ensured pay equity cases were dealt with fairly, quickly and directly through collective bargaining. The Act ensures pay equity is issues are dealt with forthright instead of lingering for up to 15 years in the previous Canadian Human Rights Commission process. That's not fair for anyone. The motion also seeks to create a special committee of the House. There is no need for another special committee to be created. The House has a standing committee on human resources as well as the status of, status of women committee that could certainly examine this if they wish to do so. We need to be accountable to taxpayers and additional funds for duplicate committees is not about spending well. I thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you. Uh, questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Surrey Newton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, uh, thank you for the speech, uh, Honourable Member. You were mentioning that in 2009, the Public Se Sector Equitable Compensation Act was introduced, which might be one of the most deceiving titles uh, for a law in the Canadian history, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, through to you, to the Member, I would like to bring it 
to the attention of the member that according to Margot Young, a professor of law at the University of British Columbia, the act, and I quote, effectively treats pay equity as if it is not a human right. Would the member want to make a comment on that? Honourable member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. I thank the honourable member for his question. Um, this act was put in in 2012, not 2009, so I'm not sure. I believe we probably are looking at the same thing. I believe this act is sit there as a guideline. It is sit there as our legislation. It is important that we do enforce this. Even this motion today that we've put on hand, it is sit there, sit there as a template for Canadians to follow. And it is up to us as Canadians to make sure that we are abiding by this new legislation and th these new laws. So although I'm not sure exactly the quote that this lady has used, I believe legislation of this sort is very, very important. This motion that is on the table is very important. It must, it, we must close the gap on gender equality when it comes to pay. But at the same time, my concern truly is with Section C and D. First of all, the, the quotes that they said about the Conservative Party, I do not stand for those because I think there is some in, uh, incorrect information, as well as my concern as the taxpayers of Canada. We need to make sure that we are spending the taxpayers' money as well, and I do not believe setting up another committee is doing so. Thank you. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Mr. Speaker, I listen to the member's uh, speech with interest in the response to questions. Uh, my question would be, what is the acceptable level of difference for pay? So what percentage of difference is acceptable to the member? And what would be some of the barriers that she would think that uh, would account for those uh, differences and what should be done to uh, lower those barriers? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I look forward to the answer. Honourable Member for Elgin Middlesex, London. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I really thank you for your question. I do believe that it is important that equal pay, equal work, equal value. That is basically exactly what I stated. If there is a difference, we must look at other variables. Is the person doing the same level of work? If the answer is no, then I can understand there being a bit of a difference. But at the same time, equal work, equal pay. That is what I believe. I recognize that at this time, we do not have total equality. As I indicated, under the age of 35, there still remains a 2.2% gap. I recognize that, but I believe it's important that we work together as Canadians to continue to close that gap. And we can sit there and we can say it's not perfect. No, it's not perfect, but we must work together to make sure that it does become more effective. And as I've indicated, we have seen decreases in the gap, and we also have seen increases in the amount of federal public servants that are women. Thank you.